you're with Kathy and my 365 days of art prompts. Today is day 31 and their prompt is draw your desk or a table using only materials you feel like. Any materials you feel like. Perhaps you will draw the table itself or what you see on top of it. So let's see. What I'm going to do is just begin with quite a watered down kind of grey and I'm just going to place in some key objects so let's say I've got my edge of my desk back here and we've got a tray of random things. A little stand of paper. Some stacked trays. And a large-ish jug of pens and pencils and brushes and various objects. working board and a blue check tablecloth. So a little word about perspective on this. Even in something as close as a table or even especially in something as close as a table top and this goes for any kind of still life or anything like that perspective is still very important so I can see that from my point of view where I'm sitting my tablecloth and my um, my board that I have underneath my canvas or paper or whatever I'm working on to protect the table from where I'm sitting, they're not a, they're not straight lines. They're not. So some of the people would say, oh, if I'm, I've got a board and I know it's square, so I'm going to paint it like this. Well, that would be true if your point of perspective was from here. But my point of perspective to my table is actually here. So the horizon line being here, as in my eye level, I need to have perspective lines. come towards this point here from my perspective. So I've got my book there. And because everything's got perspective lines, you can see that it's now laying going that way from me instead of being absolutely flat to me. And anything else that might be further off, we would be further off to the sides even, we would be coming still towards this horizon line, which is always eye level to you. Even if you can't see it, because some object might be in the way, in my case a wall, the horizon line is still there. So an all point, all perspective lines should go from your point 
so I can see the edge of the table over here and here. I can see the back edge of the table, but the perspective points will always take me in a line towards my horizon line. And that way, you'll always get your perspective right. So because I'm looking kind of down on my table, I'm not standing back from it, my horizon would be sort of way up here somewhere. So my points are going towards that. And that will also go for the pattern on my tablecloth. They'll all be aiming up towards that horizon line. And as it, get, it gets further away from me, the lines on it appear less wide and flat and more narrow and angled and closer together as well. So I'm not sort of concerned about being terribly accurate with this, I'm just doing a little demonstration of how we do these things. So somewhat closer together. Okay. So now do you see that table now looks like rather than being sort of hard to hard to say this little box will do. So instead of me looking at the table from this angle, I'm sitting here and looking at it from this angle. Because we have perspective. A little bit of colour on my jar, a bit less water. Leave that for a little bit. Move on to my trays. So they're not sitting straight onto me, one's on a bit of an angle. So with this tray, it is sitting straight on to me, so the back edge of that, again going up towards the, sorry, the, the side of that, going back up towards the horizon line, and this is more straight on to me, so it's going to go sort of straight up like that, and again we're in perspective. So I'll fill that in with a little bit of green first. Because it is a transparent container, just going to make a few little shadowy areas down here where things are casting their shadows, and I'll let that dry and then pop some of the objects into it. Now, you can see the mistake I made in the book. So we'll fix that by painting in my brown board. That's a bit of the wrong colour. So my point is up 
there. Let's get a bigger brush. Probably using far too much water for this paper. I don't mind too much because I've already finished the page behind it. I'm okay with this being kind of loose and free. So my hat paint's had some time to dry now. And I'm just going to continue looking at these mess of things that I have in here. I'm not sticking with sticking. <laughs> I'm not sticking with the same colours necessarily as, as the items that um, that I have in my little clear containers back there. Just looking at the shapes mainly and and using colour to make it interesting. Container does have edges on it. It's actually all my little random bits of cardboard and um, and things that I use to manipulate paint with so it's all oh, Christmas and birthday cards and um, packets of um, bits of packaging from um, various boxes so it's kind of lots of different colors going on and so I've got little variations in tone and um, some have a round edge and some have a, a straight edge. And there's even a few things that have big wide teeth on them. things that are inside in shadow just pop some of that sort of shadowy looks in little black spoon hanging out inside of there build up a little bit of depth. So I'm sort of going illustration style with this one. Okay so now my light source is coming from pretty much over my work here. So some paper here that's basically white. partly in shadow. And 
put some shadow under the edges of a few things. Going off in this direction. Some more bits of colour in here. So I've just allowed the colour to get watered down on my brush and continue that inside the jar. The other place that we have a very obvious shadow. Underneath the edge of the book. And now just to be really tricky. I think that'll do. So the moral of the of, of the moral of the story today is take notice, of, be observant. Um, shadows are very important. Um, if you get your shadows right, as in know where your light source is, you'll avoid that thing that often happens where you finish a painting and you think. There's something wrong with this, but I can't quite put my finger on it. It's often going to be something like perspective or shadows. If you've got them in the wrong place, or you've got them a little bit off, it can make your whole painting just look wrong. Even if you've done a nice job of it, sometimes you won't really be able to put your finger on where you went wrong. But if you look really closely, it's likely to be in one of those areas, especially in, um, in landscape or still life type compositions. So I hope you enjoyed today's little art prompt and if you'd like to see more please make sure to subscribe and like the video and I would love to know what you think. I will see you next time. Bye bye for now.